ABC Jack here. Welcome to Vinyl Martini. I'm back to doing another episode of I Bought a Record Collection, and this is part five. Last one I did was pretty long. This one is probably going to be just as long. But uh, people seem to uh, really enjoy them. My uh, my view numbers are, are quite high on these uh, this series of uh, uh, videos. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I bought uh, 500 records, 60 cents a piece. It works out too. So Loudon Wainwright the third album two, his second album obviously. Uh, Loudon Wainwright is best known for his song Dead Skunk, I think. Always writes quirky songs. First song on side one is Me and My Friend the Cat. He is the father of Rufus Wainwright and he used to be married to Kate McGarrigal of the McGarrigal sisters. Uh, the Bird's ninth album, this is the ballad of Easy Rider. Uh, story goes that uh, um, Peter Fonda asked Bob Dylan to write a song for the movie soundtrack, and Dylan did not have time. He's, so he wrote down some lyrics on a napkin and told Fonda, give this to McGuinn, and McGuinn can uh, write the song, perform the song. So the album was an acoustic version on the soundtrack, and then after it was released, uh, of course, McGuinn gave uh, uh, Dylan writing credit on it. Dylan got totally pissed, demanded that his name be taken off the song. So I think in subsequent, releases of the soundtrack uh, is only credited to McGuinn, but uh, they do an electric version of uh, Ballad of Re Easy Rider on here. Uh, fantastic to find a Birds album that uh, that I don't have, and this one rarely gets shown in the VC, so it's kind of cool. Some soul records. How about some Archie Bell and the Drells? It's a 1975 release. Uh, best known for the single Tighten Up. Great band uh, from that uh, soul era. Archie Bell and the Drells, and this one is called Dance Your Troubles Away. I have uh, an Impressions album, of course, it's the band that Curtis Mayfield used to be in before he went solo. Uh, the best of the Impressions, uh, fantastic to find this. Uh, People Get Ready is on here, uh, I Loved and Lost, uh, produced by uh, Johnny Pate. This is a, a band called The Persuasions, and they... Uh, they do this a cappella, so no uh, no instruments at all. So I haven't listened to this yet, but uh, it's called Spread the Word. Um, great drawing on the back there. It kind of reminds me of uh, Jimmy Cliff's Struggling Man album. So, The Persuasions. How about some Electric Flag? This is their second record. Mike Bloomfield had left the band uh, after the first album. So this is uh, really steered by, of course, uh, the, 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 the Buddy Miles, the drummer. Buddy Miles, I think, sings three songs. Uh, great to find an electric flag record. And in pretty good shape, actually, for an album that, that old. Here you go, Nick's Buddy Sandwich is gonna love this one. This is Slade Alive. Fantastic uh, rock band. Uh, oops. <laughs> Record's falling out here. It's got one of those, uh, those, one of those silly insert sleeves. I forget what they're called, but uh, uh, always tough to get it in the record. But uh, Slade Alive. Got some killer songs on here. Got some nice artwork on the inside. Uh, da, 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 da. A lot of write-ups. Uh, they do not give the track listings here, but come on, Field and Wise. They got all their big hits on there, so Slayed Alive. Got some uh, Linda Ronstadt records here. Uh, a couple that I don't have. I've been getting back into Lin Linda Ronstadt. I know Tony, too, from the trunk, is a big fan. Simple Dreams. These are easily, uh, easily findable. Uh, another record I don't have, it's called Get Closer. Lovely Linda Ronstadt there. I've, I've got a crush on Linda Ronstadt like uh, most of America does, and I have a copy of this, but this is Living in the USA. Probably her biggest selling record. So Linda Ronstadt. We got some Jimi Hendrix in the West. Amazing how many Jimi Hendrix albums there are out of, for somebody that just released three studio albums in his lifetime. But this is, uh, I don't know was where it was recorded. Uh, da, 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 I think um, probably the Fillmore East or West. Jimi Hendrix in the West with the original Experience Band. Next up, this is a comp from Columbia Records called Different Strokes. You know, they release these as uh, promo albums basically. But there's some great bands on here. Johnny Winter and Tom Rush, Poco, uh, Soft Machine, uh, Fraser and DeBolt, uh, Spirit, Miles Davis, uh, New York Ensemble of, the New York Rock Ensemble, uh, The Hollies, uh, Redbone, 
uh, the Elvin Bishop Group, uh, the Flock, uh, Laura Nero, and others. So great to have one of these comps. Nice shape as well. Bunch of Rod Stewart records. <laughs> A ton of Rod Stewart records. Uh, Footloose and Fancy Free. This was uh, 1977, so just before he uh, he did the disco stuff. But I got a bunch of 80s records. They're all mixed up. How about Rod Stewart? Just called, I think it's just titled Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart, A Night in Town. I think the second album that he recorded uh, after he moved to uh, L.A. from England. A bit of a tax dodge, I think. Rod Stewart, Out of Order, an 80s, uh, an 80s album. Great record, never a dull moment. This is fantastic, of course. Most of the faces are on there. Uh, how about Rod Stewart, Blondes Have More Fun? These are all the albums that, uh, these 80s albums that people like to make fun of. But uh, I don't know, I'm going to give them a listen. Uh, I don't mind Rod, he's a great singer. And uh, tonight I'm yours. Not a big fan of uh, stuff he, he's been doing lately with the uh, doing the American Songbook stuff. I get tired of those things. And I've got three copies of what I call the Whiskey album. And it's the best of Sing It Again, Rod. So, Rod Stewart. Just give me a second here. Okay, that's better. Cheap Trick. I consider this the best album. This is an upgrade for me because I've played the shit out of uh, the copy I have. So nice to find uh, Cheap Tricks. Uh, is it their second, their third record, I think. Uh, Gino Videlli, uh, brother to brother. I know uh, Matt from Prime Analog Records is a big fan of Gino Vanelli, and uh, rightly so. Great singer, great producer, brilliant, brilliantly produced albums. Another uh, Gino Vanelli that I did not have. I have a copy of that. That's probably an upgrade for me. Uh, this is Gina Vanelli, A Popper in Paradise. He uh, arranged uh, all the music on this. This one I saw in the rec at the record fair a while ago, but it was beat to shit, so I'm glad I didn't pick it up. And a nice Gina Vanelli record. Two copies of Ringo Starr, Good Night Vienna. Got the Oh No song on here. Uh, uh, no, no, yeah, no song, but written by Hoyt Axon, the great Hoyt Axon. Easy for me, written by Harry Nilsson. Uh, John Lennon uh, wrote Good Night Vienna. I don't have this in my collection, but I always like to get uh, solo Beatles records. Uh, yeah, just to, just to have them have them around. How about Hawaii's Greatest Hits? Yeah, it's probably going to go to the probably going to go to the uh, charity shop. But uh, nice lady on the cover, that's for sure. Bunch of Cars records here. I have most of these. Uh, I'll show you first uh, the greatest hits. Autographed by band member Karen. Beautiful condition. Uh, if you're not a Cars fan, uh, this is probably the only one you really need. And I have uh, these. This is two copies of what is the title of this record? <laughs> It's called Heartbeat City. So two very nice, clean copies. Good trade-in material. Or gift material for Cars Lovers. Nice copy of Candio. Um, I love those Vargas, uh, Vargas uh, drawings. Fantastic cover anyways. Not a bad record. And the Cars Panorama. Good shape. The Super Tramp record. Not my favorite. Um, it's just there's a couple of songs on here that I'm so sick to death of. Uh, the Logical Song and uh, what's the other one I don't like? Oh, Take the Long take the long Road Home. Take the Long Way Home. Uh, too overplayed. Not their best record. All you need is a Crime of the Century, I think. Great to find this. I've never seen this in the bins before. This is Isaac Hayes' Juicy Fruit Disco Freaks. So great cover of Isaac in the Pool. A bunch of lovely ladies doing this and then the inside cover, they've all seemed to have dropped their uh, their bottoms. So that would be a nice party to be at. B.B. Uh, King. There weren't too many blues albums, but B.B. Uh, King in London. Uh, kind of uh, one of those London session records. This is on ABC Dunhill, but, uh, you know, they uh, wheel these uh, blues greats into London. And then all these uh, fantastic white British kids uh, are dying to play with them. Uh, 
fantastic uh, lineup on here. Ringo Starr, Peter Green, Alexis Corner, Jim Price, Bobby Keys, Gary Wright, Klaus Vorman. I on and on and on and on. Not his greatest record. I, I, I always think that uh, these white gods are taking jobs away from, <laughs> from black, black musicians back in the States, but they sure did sell a lot of records. Okay. Got almost a complete Nielsen collection here. I've got a few of these, but this is a fantastic record. I think uh, Mazzy just showed this, and it's called Nielsen Sings Newman, Randy Newman Songs, and uh, I think Randy Newman plays piano on this. This is a great record. Um, just called Ken Nielsen, his later output. This is a 1977 release. I think he kind of blew his voice out. I haven't listened to this yet, but I'm really happy to have anything by Harry Nielsen. And this one is a hard one to come by. This is uh, Nielsen's first record, which is called Pandemonium, Pandemonium Shadow Show. Harry Nielsen's first record. I think uh, Paul McCartney heard this and he, uh, he was blown away. Very uh, influenced Paul, I think. Uh, Nielsen, uh, Duit au Monde. One of his later records, 19, what do we have a date on here? 1975. Love Harry Nielsen, actually. And I've already got a copy of this, but this is an upgrade. This is The Son of Dracula, starring Harry Nielsen and Ringo Starr, the soundtrack to the movie. Got a great cover. And finally, Pussycats, uh, uh, Harry's album that he did with uh, John Lennon producing, playing on, uh, part of uh, John Lennon's Wild Weekend in L.A. Two uh, albums that, you know, the best of the Eagles. It's a nice shape, though. And Hotel California. So good trade in fodder, gifts, whatever. An album by Valdi. Valdi is uh, from the west coast of uh, Canada, British Columbia. I think he actually lives on Salt Spring Island, which is about, it's an island about uh, 20 minutes away from uh, my house from the ferry terminal anyway. So Baldy and he, his big song on here was rock and roll song. So kind of folk country stuff, very enjoyable. Another record you don't see very much in the BC, and this is for you Queen fans. This is the soundtrack to Flash Gordon. I'm not the biggest Queen fan, but this will be nice trade-in material. And it's in fantastic, fantastic condition. Some more R&B, Earth, Wind & Fire, Best Of, Earth, Wind & Fire, title of this is All In All, Gate Walls, pretty good condition, BG Plus I'd say, couple of albums by the Commodores, this is when Lionel Richie was still in them, huge sellers, of course this is Natural, Natural High, and a copy of uh, The Commodore's Live, a double set. They sure sold a lot of records. Lionel Richie, uh, good songwriter, very, very, very poppy, but great to have R&B records, no matter, no matter what. Excuse me. Got a bunch of Bob Seger records. Uh, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, Stranger in Town. I don't have a copy of this, so I was happy to get this. And of course, his uh, two copies of these, which look in nice condition, but the records are not exactly in great condition. So I don't even think I can Frankenstein that into uh, getting a one complete album with great condition records. And uh, another huge seller, a seller for Bob uh, Seger, Against the Against the Wind, told sold a ton of records. I don't think I have a copy of that either. I, pre I prefer his uh, his kind of mid-60s to uh, late 60s stuff. It's a little bit uh, raw. Uh, yeah. Ario Speedwagon. Uh, high Infidelity. No. Yeah, High inv Infidelity. I had to make sure I read that right. Yeah, you know, kind of middle of the road. Uh, Midwest rock, I guess. Kim Carnes. A uh, nice copy of this, Mistaken Identity. Uh, of course, got hit Betty Davis' eyes. A lot of these records, the, whoever bought them, I think they bought them on the basis of just one song. And um, 
they found that it was a pain in the ass just to find the find the song that they liked to play it. So they just ended up playing it once and then didn't like the rest of the record and then just sort of put them aside. I was excited to see this one. It's uh, Teresa Brewer on Coral. It's Heavenly Lover. But um, unfortunately, I'm a country western fan, so uh, you know Teresa Brewer is all right in my book. Um, but it's beat to shit, unfortunately. So that will be a charity store uh, giveaway. How about uh, Wild Cherry? Love my music. Wild Cherry played play that funky, funky music. White boy. I don't know. Great cover though. Very provocative. There's the boys in the band there. Long John Baldry. It Ain't Easy, maybe his best record. One side is produced by Rod Stewart. The other side is produced by Elton John, who perform and play and contribute uh, songs to the album. Pretty good. A little bit tired of Don't Try to Lay No Boogie Woogie on the King of Rock and Roll, but uh, I liked it when it first came out. It just sort of got overplayed. Got a big Jay Giles band collection here. Um, start off with a great album. Hey, Anthony, Gambler812. It's a Boston band, uh, the Jay Giles band. Great album, Bloodshot. Two copies of uh, one of the best live albums ever put out. Uh, Jay Giles band live. The album's called Full House. One's really beat up, one's in really good shape. Of course, I've got both of those records. But, you know, I'll upgrade it or trade it in or whatever. And some of their late 70s material... Love Stinks. I had a huge hit with Love Stinks. And the Jay's, Jay Giles band, Freeze Frame. Again, another huge hit with Freeze Frame. Brian, the embry Embryonic Robot, will like this one. This is the Parachute Club. Uh, I think this is their second album. It's called At the Feet of the Moon. Toronto band uh, mixed uh, with uh, male and female players. So... The Parachute Club. I can't remember the, the title song. I think that was a hit for them, though. Copy of Kraftwerk. It's called Acceler 8. This is a comp. Best of. I mean, the best of Kraftwerk, really? <laughs> but it's got Autobahn on here. It's got Cristallo on here. Crane Clan, uh, Comet Melody. So, nice to have. Uh, it's always nice to get uh, um, a Kraftwerk album. And it's in really good shape. Um, I know a lot of people love this band. Eh, um, eh, eh, eh. The Monkeys Headquarters. This is their third record, maybe? Not sure. Um, a little bit beat up, of course. But uh, anyways, that'll be good trade-in material. This is a really weird one. This is called Classic, Classic Therapy and was put out by the Pfizer Corporation, the, the big drug company. And it's a... Uh, uh, two sides of classical music. I guess they're trying to flog this um, this drug called Vibram <laughs> Vibram Isson. I don't know what that stuff does. I don't know if it's a sexual uh, a sexual drug or hair loss drug or whatever. But uh, this is weird enough for me to keep. It'll go in my classical collection. Uh, yeah, classic. Okay. Some world music with Los Indios Tabajaras, two guys from the uh, the Amazon uh, basin, the rainforest. Uh, they uh, found some guitars. Learned they learned how to they taught themselves how to play guitar, and then afterwards they took lessons. But they had a really big career. They uh, toured the world, and uh, really interested in listening to this acoustic guitar music. Always good. Uh, this is called Jacques, Jacques Mixel, a French singer, I think. I don't know why French records, this is probably Quebecois. Unusual to find that in the collection because they don't, it, it, you know, it's just, it's just a little bit different. Uh, it is on, kind of a label, I don't think I've ever seen this label before. It is called Le Disques Zodique. That's a, a label from Quebec or not, probably. But uh, interested in, uh, that'll be interesting. an interesting listen. Bunch of Beach Boys albums here. Um, of course, the Beach Boys Endless Summer. They sold a shitload of, uh, of these records. This is a best of comp two record set. Came out in 1975, I believe. Uh, kind of beat up. It's really a... Uh, 
pretty unfortunate. I, I don't think I can uh, Frankenstein the records together to get one nice copy. So they're pretty crapped up. But maybe that'll go to the charity shop. Uh, the Beach Boys, 1985 release, just called The Beach Boys. Um, that's a picture of the band there. They were kind of losing it by then. But I've seen people show this on the uh, on the VC, and they seem to like it. And this is probably maybe the only Beach Boys record you need. This is The Beach Boys' Good Vibrations. This is a comp put out on Pickwick. Uh, Good Vibrations, God only knows. Dance, dance, dance. 409, Darling, the little girl I once knew. Girl... Don't tell me heroes and villains, and she knows me too well. So that's a keeper. I like the Beach Boys. A couple of Michael Franks records. He's a singer, songwriter, kind of jazzy, uses a, plays electric piano. This is a Tiger on the Run and a Sleeping Gypsy. This is kind of a maybe, might be trade in material, who knows? We'll give it a we'll give it a listen. And Till we meet again at the Harrison. This is the the Harrison that they're talking about is a place called the Harrison Hot Springs Hotel, which is uh, at the end of the Fraser Valley, Harrison Lake. It's on Harrison Lake, and obviously there's hot springs there. I've stayed at the hotel a couple of times. Great place to stay. But this is their kind of uh, their their dinner music band. A um, little bit of a controversy because this fellow here, I don't know his name. He's Hungarian, by the way. He was a piano virtuoso, um, but he uh, recorded a song, and uh, just bear with me for a second, that never sold anything, but he was listening to a Lipton's Tea commercial, and uh, he recognized the melody of the music on the commercial, and it was done by this guy called Haggard Hardy. Um, Haggard Hardy uh, gave himself credit for the song, this uh, Hungarian fellow took him to court. I think they were in court for copyright infringement or whatever. And uh, they were in court for the case dragged on for about six or seven years. And unfortunately, this Hungarian fellow passed away and that was the end of litigation. So Hagrid Hardy got to keep all the money. All right, Martha Davis and the Motels. Another Motels record. I've got uh, two Motels records and they're, you know, sort of new wave, new wave stuff. From the uh, early 80s. Not bad. Brian the Embryonic Robot will recognize this one, I think. This is Reflex, and the name of the album is The Politics of Dancing. Came out in 19... It's getting a little dark here, folks. I think it came out in 1978 and 1979. Had a lot of airplay on CFNY. Uh, so Brian will know who this is, and uh, he knows more about... I'm sure he knows more about these guys than I do. A little bit of Herb Alpert. Yeah, you know. It's in the shrink. It's a nice <laughs> nice copy. Oh, for Rachel's Ghost, one of her favorite uh, artists. Little Dutch guy called Heinze. Uh I think he was... Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I think he was born in 1956. So he's uh, two years younger than I am. I'm sure he doesn't look like that anymore. But he sold a lot of records worldwide. Uh, yeah, Rachel's Rachel's ghost loves her. Him, yeah, sorry. How about Vangelis? This is an album that I've never seen before. It's Spiral. Man, that uh, Vangelis put out a lot of records. Uh, 78 cents, not returnable. Important to keep in mind. Always seem to run into copies of this record, and uh, they make great gifts, great uh, trade-in, uh, great trade-in records. This is Sardé. Her second record, maybe? I think it's her second record. Either her first or her second, but this is a great record. It's called Promise. Love, uh, love Sardin. Fantastic. Uh, Kenny Loggins. This is called Box Humana. Yeah, Kenny Loggins. Yeah, well, well, whatever. Good shape, though. Another k -Tel album. This is 25 Rock Revival Greats. Original Stars. Chuck Berry. Uh, on and on and on and on. Johnny Be Good. Uh, was it? There was something surprising about this record that I cannot spot right now. I thought there was somebody weird on here, but uh, no. Pretty the covers, pretty beat up though. This one is another KTEL, and Super Bad is back. This one is awesome, man. It's got the uh, Gladys Knight, the Pips, the Stylistics, Millie Jackson, Cool in the Gang, Bill Withers, Lean on Me's on on here, James Brown, 
Mandrel, First Choice, Chai Lights, Gladys Knight, Barry White, Earth, Wind & Fire, The Manhattans, uh, The OJs, and Curtis Mayfield. So this one is uh, in great shape. I'm gonna, that's, that's gonna be a keeper for sure. How about some Wilson Pickett? This is uh, the, the 1971 release. Uh, Fire and Water, uh, it doesn't matter what, what the songs are. This is probably doesn't have his greatest hits on here or any of his biggies on here, but it's always great to have uh, Wilson Pickett. What a great singer, what a great performer. Wilson Pickett on Atlantic Records. Uh, my first ACDC record. <laughs> it's hard to believe that I don't have any ACDC records, but this is back in black. This is a killer, it's got the embossed, uh, it's got the embossed cover. Uh, Everybody knows this record. The reason I don't have them is because I was kind of more of a Led Zeppelin fan, and they, I, I and, yeah, anyways, more of a Led Zeppelin fan rather than an ACDC fan. And I just found that you can, you know, you want to hear ACDC, just turn their, turn classic rock radio on, and, uh, you know, within five minutes you'll hear an ACDC song. So I didn't ever think it was uh, necessary to own one, but I'm glad to have it. Exile, kind of a, don't know what these guys are. Uh, don't know anything about Exile. Kind of middle of the road, uh, Midwest music maybe. It's on Curb Records, Mike Curb, I guess. So uh, that probably says it all. How about some East Coast R&B, kind of Asbury Park music, Gary U.S. Bonds. I already have the copy of this record that I bought for a dollar, but these two are in great, great shape. So I'll probably trade mine out, trade it in. Not worth it a lot of money, but uh, it was produced by Miami Steve and Bruce Springsteen. So uh, those guys were all buddies. Kind of like Southside Johnny and the Ashbury Dukes, I guess. Almost at the end, guys. Almost. How about some split ends? Uh, the Finn brothers are on here. And Tim and Neil. I actually met uh, the Finns, the Finn boys' parents on the ferry once in 1988, the first time I uh, came out to the West Coast. Well, it wasn't the first time I came out to the West Coast, but first time in many years. Very nice people. They're sitting across from us on the ferry. We had a nice chat about the boys. How about the greatest hits of James Galway? Yeah, I can probably be, probably not hanging around very long. A copy of Tamita, pictures at an exhibition. One of the first guys to utilize the, uh, the Moog synthesizer. Moog synthesizer. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> I can't even talk today. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have a little sip of my brew here. All right, Tamita, happy to have that. Um, Art, Big Chief, North Carolina vinyl picker, will be happy to see that one in my collection. Uh, another whatever. Nadia's theme, it's uh, the theme for the young and the restless, the uh, soap, uh, soap opera that uh, you may or may not be familiar with. Probably not, uh, probably not keeping this. Band that I see all the time, but I don't have any other records. This is The Fix. I don't really know anything about them. It's called Phantoms, but it's in great, great condition. Uh, late 70s, early 80s, of 1984. I see Fix records all the time, or cheap, so. I will check them out. Nice copy of Close to the Edge. Great gift, great trade-in material. Hey, Gary at Physical Format Jazz. <laughs> That's Mike from MGK likes to call him. A couple of uh, Levy Mutant John records. I happen to know the guy that took the, uh, took the jacket cover photographs. Really nice guy. Um, and it is called Come On Over. And Olivia Mutant John big hit on here called Physical. I like Little Mutant John. I like her earlier stuff, her country stuff. A little bit of Middle of the Road, Rock, Pablo Cruz, two different records. One is called A Place in the Sun, uh, and this one is called Worlds Away. Uh, yacht Rock, I don't know, Midwest Yacht Rock, Pablo Cruz. Oh, this is, this is a classic. As advertised on TV, this is, oh, what is sorry, I just want to, oh, it's called Golden Ribbons, of course, and uh, it is uh, Tony Orlando and Don, so you got all those classic songs, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, uh, up on the roof, uh, what else do they do? 
No, oh, not three times. That was a huge hit. I mean, used to hear those at weddings all the time. Wow, I didn't pick those for Mike's contest. Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem. Uh, Irish folk music. Uh, they were really, really big in the mid-60s. This is uh, uh, probably about a 1965 release. Uh, traditional Irish music. So Tommy Makem and the Clancy Brothers. The lovely... Emmy Lou Harris, Elite Hotel. I've got a lot of uh, Emmy Lou Harris records, but I don't have a copy of this. And this is a really, really nice, a really nice copy. Almost done, folks. I'm just going to pull these out. How about the Chad Mitchell Trio, Singing Our Mind? Uh, kind of a Kingston Trio was out uh, when, they, when they were a big act. Uh, all sorts of trios were out there playing folk music and... Uh, doing their thing. Uh, I have this on CD, but this is Phil Spector's Christmas album, so this will go in my Christmas collection. This is a banger. Really, really good. Another interesting record on uh, that the Disc Zodique la uh, label. This is uh, Jim Corcoran and Bertrand Gosselin. Interested in checking this out. I've got three more records to go, guys. A nice soundtrack from 1960. I'm going to say 1965, maybe. This is uh, Jerry Lewis, Tony Curtis, and Hal Wallace's Boeing, Boeing uh, movie. Um, these covers are always so great. They're a little bit sexy, a little bit racy. And then, you know, you watch the movie and you go, oh, hum. <laughs> There's nothing racy about it at all. How about... Uh, Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. Not the biggest Meatloaf fan, but, you know, a lot of people like him. He sold a ton of records. And finally, last but not least, very happy to find this. This is Doug Somm, the Sir Douglas Quintet, with his fabulous album, Mendocino. So, that's all I got. I'm a big Doug, Sam, Doug Somm fan. So, really, really happy to have that. I already have a copy of that, but it's nice to have a spare. There we go. 32 minutes. Oh my goodness. If you're still with me, thank you so much for watching. I want to thank all my new subs. I'm running a contest. I will talk about that in my next video. Uh, but uh, there's another part to come up. I promise that's the last one. It's going to be part six. So if you enjoyed that, I'm glad. If uh, if it's not your thing, you probably, you probably bombed out of this uh, video a long time ago. So thanks for watching. Uh, Till the next time. Cheers, guys. See you later.